Hey photographers, what do you think? Should you get it right in camera or just fix it in post? I'm gonna tell you what I think on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. If you've got photo questions, you know what to do. You just go to askdavidbergman.com, submit your question right there on the site. I just might pick it to answer here on a future show. Today I've got a question sent in from Malcolm R. And Malcolm wants to know, despite editing software, we are often told to get it right in camera. Why? Thanks, Malcolm. This is such a great topic and I love diving into this stuff. Now, my thoughts on this actually might surprise you. I'm a purist in many ways. I want my images to look realistic and don't want to spend a lot of time in post-processing when I can really be out shooting pictures instead. But I'm also not a snob about this. The phrase, get it right in camera, is often used in a way that looks down upon photographers who rely on software to make their images look a certain way. Many people think it's sort of a badge of honor to post images that are SOOC, straight out of camera. But personally, I never post images straight out of camera. When I'm shooting them, I know that I'm gonna be doing at least a little bit of work on every single image before you get a chance to see it. So really, where did this concept start? Well, back in the film days, we had post-processing too. If you were shooting negatives, you also had to go ahead and make prints in a darkroom from those negatives. Now you could absolutely manipulate your images in a lot of different ways, but it was time consuming and it was expensive, right? You needed to have a light sealed room, you had to purchase and maintain nasty chemicals and lots of equipment, and then you burn through a new sheet of paper every single time you made a print. So when you were shooting, you worked pretty hard to get that photo looking as close as possible to the final shot that you envisioned. That way it was just a simple, quick print job and you could get to your next shoot, which is where you probably made most of your money. And if you were shooting slide film, which most commercial photographers were doing back then, you really couldn't do any post-processing at all since you shot right to the final positive image and didn't make any prints in the first place. Now, of course, there were some exceptions. Some people spent a lot of time tweaking in the darkroom because it was part of their style. Master printmakers for photographers like Ansel Adams would spend all day in the darkroom just to make that one perfect print. But they were hopefully selling those prints for big money that made the time and effort worth it. Ansel Adams certainly did that, right? So now let's fast forward to today. Now we live in a digital world. Post-processing is relatively cheap, it's easy, and it's really accessible for almost everyone. But that film era pride still exists, and you often hear photographers say, as you mentioned, Malcolm, to just get it right in camera. I think there's a few reasons for this. First of all, as an aside, if you're just lazy and don't know what you're doing, then you really need to get it together and work on your craft. Hoping that you can just make a decent image in the computer out of nothing is rarely gonna work out. So I wouldn't recommend going that route. But beyond that, many of the technical aspects of photography really seem pretty easy to adjust in the computer these days. You can shoot on an auto exposure setting like aperture priority, auto ISO, or even full program. I hope you're not doing that, but some people do shoot on full program. But each image might just be a little bit off depending on what the camera's seeing. Some could be overexposed, some could be under, and each frame could be off by a completely different amount. It's not hard to fix that in post, especially if you're shooting raw, which I hope you all are, but unless they really all need to be adjusted by the exact same amount, you need to go through each individual frame and figure out how much adjustment it needs. If you're a high volume headshot photographer, for example, you could have hundreds or thousands of frames to adjust one at a time. That's brutal, right? And it's tedious. And you'll probably never get them to be the exact same brightness throughout. And you're probably also not being paid for all that time in front of the computer. If you get your exposure right in camera, then you don't have to spend any time doing that. Or if you do need to change the exposure, you can just batch them all in one click because they can all be adjusted by the exact same amount. Also, remember, you can't be too far off with your exposure or the quality of your images can really suffer when you try to compensate in post. If you're shooting something once in a lifetime, like a wedding or other, another big event like that, you really can't afford to miss a single shot. Now composition, I think, is another thing that you really should get right in camera if you can do it. If you've got a tree coming out of someone's head, for example, you should notice that when you're shooting. Pay attention and notice those things and then take the time to simply move yourself or your subject. If you wanna to try to clone, that, clone out that tree in Photoshop afterward, it's really gonna take a long time and it might never look natural. There's really no reason not to get that right in camera, especially when it's such a quick and easy fix. 
Lastly, learning to read the light when shooting, I believe is super important. The word photography literally means painting with light. So you need to understand how light works and really work on analyzing the direction and the quality in any situation. While you can make some lighting adjustments in post, the skills you pick up in working with the light, whether that's moving your subject, changing your angle, or adding flash or other artificial light sources, that's gonna serve you so much better in the long run as you work on your craft and you improve as an artist and a photographer. Now, as someone who's worked both in the film and digital eras, I think there's also a good case to be made in some circumstances to say you'll fix it in post. The technology available to us today is amazing. Digital editing and the newest AI tools have empowered so many people to be creative with their photography. I'm all for that. The democratization of photography is a good thing, but it's up to each person to decide when it's worth it to spend the time tweaking in post. There are things like cropping that sometimes just need to be done in post. Sure, if I can do it in camera when I'm shooting, I'm absolutely gonna do that. But if I'm shooting fast action like sports or concerts and I'm putting all my concentration and my energy into making sure I capture those peak moments while also getting my subjects in focus, I might not be able to place my subject exactly in the frame where I want. I go into that situation knowing that I'm likely gonna have to crop and post and I'm just fine in that case. Also, the technology we have has allowed many photographers to create their own unique look for their work, and that helps them to stand out in the market. Maybe you like high-key, blown-out faces and punchy, contrasty, desaturated backgrounds, whatever your style is. You can't necessarily get that directly in camera. Or I've gone and done images that are made up of multiple frames stitched together to create a single high-res file. Obviously, that also can't be done in camera. Look, at the end of the day, you should decide what you want to create and then go ahead and create it. That's art and photography. As long as you're shooting with a purpose and know what your end goal is, I believe it's perfectly fine to plan on working on those images in the computer after the fact. Or don't. It's totally up to you. Thanks, Malcolm, for sending in that question. I really appreciate it. Send in your own photo questions right here at askdavidbergman.com. I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you're not already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel, go ahead and click that button down below. Use the little bell icon to be notified as soon as new shows come out all week long. I'll be back here next time with a brand new question. I hope you'll join me. Thanks for being here with me right here on Ask David Bergman.